Hi, this is Ron Netter, and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Netter. And in this episode, I'm going to show you how to choose between all these different streaming receivers and what's going to work best for you. And that starts now. When I was planning this episode, I thought long and hard about do I try to do a juggling act, and I went, I don't want to start toasting these things and damaging them. So we'll just, you'll have to bear with me as I bring the different ones in and out of the picture. I've already done one video showing you how to deal with if you misplace the Roku remote, and there's, and there's options there. And you'll see, I've got other videos planned on doing one for the Amazon Fire. And for those of you who have not seen this picker model before, this is the Gen 1. This is the first one. And Amazon, to their credit, is still supporting this one. So uh, it may not do 4K, but you know what? I can live with that. Uh, then I've got the NVIDIA Shield, Apple TV, and Roku. And yes, I am using all these. We'll get into that here in a bit. There are a lot of things to, to think about. And the, the, I guess the first thing that we probably need to, to discuss is, do you get an external player like this, or a streaming receiver, if you want to use the, that term, or do you get one built into a TV? Here's my thought on that. If the streaming receiver has a problem in the TV, well, now you've got extra hardware in the TV, and you're going to have to go replace it. If the TV goes bad, well... Now you're replacing the TV and the streaming receiver. So there, there, there's pros and cons to both. Uh, with the way standards are changing and there's a new HDMI standard coming down the pike and there's some other things that will be changing, I, I'm going to go for the what I call the component stereo approach to where you have the separate ones because if this fails, okay, you toss it, you get a new one. If that one on the TV goes bad or if whoever's device is in the TV decides to stop supporting it or there's some new feature that they're just not going to port back to the hardware you're kind of in the same position at least with an external one it's you know you can replace that a lot easier because let's face it as tvs are keep improving in the led oled and there's other plethora of standards out there you're less apt to change the tv now, for example, I've still got the same HD set I bought several years ago. I haven't seen a compelling need to change. Yes, the 4K standard is out there. Yes, you've got other standards. You've, you know, they, I hear that the Japanese are working on an 8K standard that they want to have out by the time they host the Olympics because they're going to broadcast an 8K. Well, there's always going to be a moving target. And at least when you go with an external streaming receiver, you've got a chance to Maybe some catch up with those if it doesn't involve changing the TV. But let, let's look at, at some of the options here. Now, Roku is a very well recognized name, and this is the uh, make sure I got it right here. This is the Premier Plus, the the latest model. And let me flip over to the screen. Is the Roku Ultra? The big thing is it's got uh, faster processors. It's got more of them. So, especially in a, in a home theater situation, it's probably going to be one you want to seriously consider. Now, Roku, to their credit, I've got an old, and I'll call it the hockey puck, because that's the format it looks like. The Roku XS. Look that one up. It hasn't been around in a long time. They still support that one. Now, it may not have the same level of firmware that the Premier Plus or the Ultra does, but it still runs. i, I had one that I wasn't using, and I gave one to a friend because he wasn't sure he what, what he wanted to do. I said, here, try this out. You know, and I told him, it's going to be a little slower than the others. And it has, you know, as, as they keep moving along, they're going to make other changes. Uh, you can link with the newer ones on both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, although between you and me and the doorpost, I wouldn't... Uh, do video on 2.4 because you're going to pretty much kill whatever channel it's on. And at least with 5 gigahertz, you got more to spread around. Before I get too far into this, you've heard me say for several podcasts or videos on YouTube that I am working towards getting fully online with the different 
podcast networks. As of late yesterday, I'm now online with iTunes. So iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, Google Play. I mean, I'm on the major networks. And here is something interesting. I've noticed it works really well with the Roku. If you get the TuneIn app on Roku, you can listen to your podcasts with this. Now, granted, mine's audio only. I may eventually go video. I haven't decided yet. But there are some advantages when I tried to be on all the networks that I could. So the thing is, you these are, this is not just limited to doing just videos. And I, you know, I'm not just keep holding up the Roku, although that is the one I probably use the most. And the second one's probably Amazon Fire. Amazon Fire has matured over time. Now, they don't make this model anymore, and I really wish they did, because I much prefer this kind of external form factor, because the newer ones are basically a, a small version of this that hangs on a cable, and I don't like putting that kind of stress on a cable. Now, the Amazon Fire TV Cube, which don't have one of those, hey, Amazon, love to take a look at it, if you'd help me out here, um, it does a whole bunch of things. It even has Alexa built into it. Yeah, it has some limitations, but guys of that kind of generation device, I mean, that's Gen 1. So, I mean, this they're, they're breaking yet more territory. Each of these is kind of a little bit different. Roku's got their own operating system. Amazon probably is running a fork of uh, Android OS, although I've never looked at that for in any detail. But... You know, it works, and they keep it maintained. Apple TV is using their own, uh, well, it's I guess it's still called Apple OS, but, you know, does it really matter? Now, the NVIDIA Shield is kind of what I call the, the reference platform, much like you're hearing about the Pixel and the Pixel 2 being the reference platform for the Android phones. I look at the NVIDIA Shield as being that because it has some functionality to it that some of them don't have. It has two USB ports on the back. In addition, it has both HDMI and it's got wired Ethernet plus the power. Now, where the two USB ones come into play is you can use the NVIDIA Shield as more than a streaming receiver. There are There's one dongle already available that you can turn this into a, into a Samsung SmartThings controller. With a downloading the appropriate app, you can make this a Plex server. Now, here's the catch. When it's doing that, it's not going to do anything else. This is not a multitasking device. So if you're going to turn it into a Plex server, okay, it's, you know, if you're going to need it just once in a while, that's one thing, but you're not going to do anything else with this while it's doing Plex. So I've, I've been trying to do that. And so far, I've not been really that thrilled with it. If you're, another thing to look at is what ecosystem you're in. If you're in the Apple iPhone ecosystem, then it may make a lot of sense to go with the Apple TV. Now, there's a decision you got to make there that's going to have some price uh, range to it. If you get one that's the 4K model, it's there's two different price points in there and it has to do with, in supporting 4K, how much internal memory you want. And if you think this is big, I should have gotten my Apple TV Gen 1 out. It's huge. It's about four times the size. But that's how much things have, have come down. Now, it's... There, but there, another thing you've got to look at is the programming that's available. And before I get to that, let me show you. This is the Roku stick. Now, this is one that I use it on a TV in the rear of my house. I don't have it on that much. It does the job fine. Now, depending on your TV, you may not need to use a transformer like you do with the others because there's a cable that comes with it. You plug it in here. And you go into the USB port of your TV. It's If it's a new enough TV or the right manufacturer, then you can power it off the TV. In the TV I got on, this is labeled a, is a service port. Well, it happens to feed enough voltage that the Roku is, is happy. Now, this does run. If I try to match speed on this versus speed on this, there's no competition. This is simply faster. Well, it's got more computing power than this one does. If you're in a tight space... This is an option. You've seen me do some videos on the traveling smart home. This is a very good option. I, I've got a, a fire stick version of this as well that I'll be taking with me when I do some traveling just so that I can have a chance at having 
my streaming with me. Let's face it. What do the tel- what do the uh, hotels have to offer for TV channels? Well, not much. And besides, I have my content that I I prefer to watch. Now, getting to content, that's where I started to go a minute ago before I, I wanted to add one other thing. This is something else that you want to look at as a deciding point as to which platform you want to go with. The Roku has their own channel, and they put a lot of free content on there. Yeah, it's ad-supported, but I think we're all pretty much used to that. There are all sorts of third-party uh, add-ons. This You can even have a, and I'm doing, for those of you listening to the podcast, I'm doing air quotes, you, there are even private channels that you've got to know the access code and all that that you can put on these. There, you, you, if you have your own uh, video podcast like I do, I could even go to the extent of making it available as a channel on Roku. So there, there's several things. The Roku is kind of a, a Swiss Army knife to, is, is a good way to describe it. It's a very decent package. They do a good job of keeping it firmware and just for a little... Grins and giggle, they occasionally at certain times of the year will change the wallpaper to, to match the season. Now, the Amazon Fire TV started out, it was just, you could get just the Amazon content on it. The, uh, you know, when you, if you remember member of Prime, that's when you really can start leveraging this. Now, this several years ago was ahead of its time. It has a fiber optic connection coming off the back for audio. So that really to, to get you, the the highest quality audio that will uh, it gives you an option. Not all of these have it. Apple doesn't have it. Uh, the, at least the Roku Premier Plus doesn't have it. Even the Nvidia Shield doesn't have it. Now there are when I talked about this being the Android uh, TV OS, there are some very and I don't want to call them cheap. They're economical boxes that do. They use this kind of a similar version, but the uh, NVIDIA Shield, I mean, it can be a gaming console because there is a remote control you get for it. It looks like a regular gaming piece. So it's a matter of what you think you're going to want to do and then looking at the content because when I first started out with the book, uh, which was not this one, I was initially going to start with one about streaming media receivers and then I started realizing there were other things to do that's when I actually went and made a a matrix at one point to look at some of the channels I was really wanting to use because of some technical training well what I found very quickly is that not all channels are on all platforms so this is where it's going to take some digging to figure out what you want to do in terms of getting content because while a good number of them are usually on Roku. Some or most of those are on Amazon. Most of them are on here, although some of what you see on the Roku is not going to be available on Apple. And then when you get to the NVIDIA Shield, so if you want to play, say, YouTube videos, which is a Google-owned property, well, you're not going to find that on the Amazon Fire. It was at one point, Amazon and Google got into a spitting match, and that's the nice word that I can use. It's been taken off there. So to get the YouTube content, that means you're down to Roku. Uh, believe it's on Apple TV. I haven't turned this on for a few days and checked that one, and then it's for sure on here. Now, even with that, there are going to be... UI or user interface differences to think about. For example, when I managed to get my podcast that, well, you're watching now or if you're listening on uh, TuneIn or the other uh, distribution options that I've got, the TuneIn app on here let me subscribe to it. Basically, I went into my TuneIn login and said, yes, I want to subscribe, make it a favorite, and that way it showed up under the favorites menu under the Roku well, on, it was either the Amazon or I think it was the NVIDIA Shield. It was the NVIDIA Shield because I remember it was, it was the Android version of the app. I couldn't pick up my favorites. I couldn't log in. So it, it's going to be some experimentation you may have to do. You know, if you've got friends, if you're fortunate to have ones that have the, the different streaming options, while one may just have an Apple TV, one may have Roku and Amazon 
and tell you somebody else may have an NVIDIA Shield or one of the Android TV OS uh, counterparts, see if you can spend a, an hour or two and get, it, get a feel for it and, and then look at what your friends are subscribing to, see what is going to work the best for them. Now, I've got links in the in the show notes for getting the devices that I've shown you here, except for Apple TV. They don't have an affiliate program, so you just go to apple.com and you can find it there. I've got the the others. Like I said, I wish Amazon still sold this version. They don't. But there are a lot of options to work with, and you may find you may want to have more than one streaming receiver. And there's nothing wrong with that one. There was one night I was having a problem. I forget what content it was, and I think it was either the Roku or the Amazon that just I kept having... Uh, it was pausing and it wasn't keeping the stream up the way it should well i switched to another media receiver and the problem went away he was told me it was something about the app or how that particular media receiver was working with that there could have been several variables to that so especially if you've got say a, a child going away to college i don't know how the college networks will handle it but you know putting a some double sticky tape on this or using some of the 3m command strips you could put that right on the back of a, a TV, and that's another thing. Some of these remotes are RF-based. Some are infrared-based. So you'll have to kind of figure out which one's going to work the best in a situation. I'd already touched on the Roku one. If you lose the or misplace, and I have managed to do that, the remote. Well, Roku fairly easy to do you can get the a replacement controller the trick is look at your model number on here because there are different versions of the controllers and, and I said this in the video that I did about dealing with a lost or, or failed Roku remote unless you really don't have the money stay away from anything other than the Roku remote because all the reviews I've read about the third-party remotes, uh, it's, it's very hit and miss where the Roku remote, you know, it's, if you have a problem, you can call Roku and they're, and they're going to stand behind the product. The only challenge there is your remote is not necessarily going to be the same one that came with it. Apple TV, well, I got a video plan on that one. We'll go into the details there. There's some, some limitations you want to know about. And with the NVIDIA Shield and Amazon Fire, there are options available and I am looking, there is a company called Cabo. It's about a $500 device, uh, but I found it on sale, that acts as an intermediate between all these different devices. So I'm, I'm anxious to see what it does in terms of voice control. I've already shown you in one video about voice control with the Roku. There are third-party options available for NVIDIA Shield. In fact, this one supports Google Assistant, so you've got Google Assistant built in on this one. The Amazon Fire TV Cube has the Amazon Alexa platform built into it. This one doesn't, but there's still some options. It, it all, and that's something else. If you're wanting to do voice control with this, look at the, at the platform of choice that you're using for voice, whether it's the, the Amazon Echo, the Google Assistant, I'd say with Microsoft Cortana, I've not had a lot of luck trying to interface that, but I think that's somewhat because Microsoft's not at the same point in market penetration that the Echo is and that the, uh, oh, forgot it there for a minute, that, that Google Assistant is. So there are options. It's just a matter of which one you feel is going to work the best for you. And it is entirely possible. You may end up with, uh, say, the Google, I mean, the, the Amazon Fire and the Apple TV. Or you might end up with two of these. Now, do you need all four? Probably not. But there, uh, it, it would be a way, say, if you have two different Netflix accounts, you could have Netflix account A on Roku and the Netflix account B on Apple TV. So there are some reasons to have multiple streaming receivers. Part of it is I just love doing the experimentation and seeing how the different ones work. And I have, like I said, I found some options, especially with, with the TuneIn app that I found 
it was much more full featured on Roku, where the Nvidia Shield, eh, I think it's still a work in progress there. And no negative comments meant towards the folks at TuneIn that did that, because it's different platforms have different SDKs and APIs, so you can't always be Apple for Apple on on between platforms. It's you can try, but it's not always going to work that way. So we've kind of gone over the the basics of this. And I've got other videos planned where, especially when I get the Cabo device in. And then what we're going to do is looking, and I'm probably a couple of weeks from doing this one. You've heard of something probably called an AV receiver, audio visual receiver. Basically, it's what I would call a stereo on steroids. And here's the, the deal. It has multiple HDMI inputs. So you hook your streaming receivers into it, and then it acts as the switching point to the TV because... Not all TVs have enough HDMI ports. I mean, the uh, my LG uh, big screen has only got four inputs on. And I hate to tell you, I'm switching inputs occasionally because I'm t doing testing different devices, or if I want to use the Blu-ray, I simply don't have enough inputs. So that's where an AV receiver will help in that respect. And I've got a whole set of videos planned on that one, plus with the Kava device, which is in transit. I should have it. Uh, in about a week from now, I've been watching the tracking, and it's uh, has just left California, so I should have it here within a in a few days. So you've got an idea. I hope if hopefully I haven't gotten you you too confused. If you have any questions on the different boxes, please ask me. I'm happy to do what I can to help you because there's there's more than one way to deal with things, but it's finding the best one that works for you. Again, everything I've talked about here, with the exception of Apple TV, I've got in the show notes, the affiliate links. Now, I do get a small commission from that. It's not going to change your price at all. It does help with the cost of getting the uh, the channel up and running because I, for the most part, I have to buy all these things. So that, that helps with uh, keeping me from going too far into uh, the savings and, and get everything done. But there, things are constantly changing. So, I mean, don't think you've got to get the absolute best uh, high-end media streaming receiver today because things are always changing. But having said that, you know, when you've got some brands like Roku that it does an excellent job with supporting devices that haven't been sold in eight years, that that's something to think about too, is looking at a company's track record as to how long they support the device. If you've got an Android phone, using the uh, NVIDIA Shield may be your best option. Certainly Roku is, would be one to look at. Amazon Fire is another one that's good for that. If you're an Apple iPhone, there's a strong reason to say, you know, going with the Apple TV, although there are support for the other platforms there as well. So it's figuring out what's going to work the best for you. And if you've got a chance to kick the tires on the different ones before you have to put down your money, that's certainly an option too. I, I've gone along enough. Thank you for your time. You can get to my podcast, if you just go to techbyteswithronnutter.com, I've got links to all the different ways that you can get the podcast. And generally, it's going to be, and I'm, I'm trying to be better about, I'm assuming that you, when you're listening, that I don't just hold something up and, and just talk about it. I'm, I'm trying to be a little more verbal with it. So if you see ways where I can improve on that, please let me know. We'd be happy to do what I can to help you. Thank you again for listening, and you'll be seeing more things about where I talk about the different streaming receivers. I'll be getting into hooking up an AV receiver. There's a lot to be done on the smart home because especially, you know, the whole thing is getting the devices to work for you. So with being able to use Siri with Apple TV, that's one option. And you've got Apple. I mean, you've got uh, the, the Amazon Echo. You've got Google Assistant. So there's all number of ways you can do a lot of this. So it's just kind of figuring out what's going to work best for you. Thank you for your time and watching the video or listening to the podcast. And we'll talk to you again soon.